Hey, how's it going, guys? This is Elena. Welcome to a brand new episode of Shadows of Deception. This seems like a really cool game. It's a detective type of game that, uh, you know, that. Okay, <laughs> you guys are actually going to understand it if you check out my previous video. Uh, this is episode 2, and we are actually going to get into the deeper parts of the story, which is going to be like really cool. So, this is Diana, the girl on the left. She is going to be the main character, I suppose, and I think we are going to play as her, or we are going to see her POV in the future. Amidst the chaos and grief, Diana couldn't shake off the sense of responsibility she felt for Jason. She knew that she couldn't bring his parents back, but she could provide him with the support he needs during this challenging time. After the funeral, Diana approached Jason in a heartfelt offer. I don't know how to do this, Miss Diana. They are gone. Mrs. Diana? Okay. And I, I just can't believe it. I understand Jason losing them is a pain that will stay with us, but we have to take one step at a time. You are not alone, remember? We'll face this together. Jason, still in shock from the loss of his parents, nodded silently. Tears in his eyes. Diana knew that his, this was just a beginning of a challenging journey, but she was determined to be supportive to offer him a chance at a brighter future. Jason nodded his gratitude evident in his eyes. With Diana's support, he stood up from the pew, ready to take those difficult past steps towards a future filled with uncertainty, but also the promise of feeling a new beginning. The unexpected call. Okay, now she's actually going to get that off. What? Okay, we get another really cool scene. She has just woken up. Oh, and another really cool scene. She looks really good though. An important meeting. I like the way the story is being told. As Diana settled into her car and started to engine, her mind began to race. The events of the previous day, the call from Mark, and the impending mission were all swelling in her thoughts. She couldn't help but talk to herself as she navigated the streets, city streets. Okay, she's going to the meeting, I suppose. Okay, that's going to be like a really important meeting. I thought that she was going to meet him. Mark Pierce greeted Diana with a note as she enters CU2 headquarters. She was met with the familiar serious atmosphere of the covert operation task force. Diana, glory could make it. Please have a seat. Diana took a seat across from him, her expression a mix of determination and concern. Mark, I need to be clear about the risk. I know this mission is critical, but I also understand there are no second chances there. Once I mean, there is no turning back. Mark leaned forward, his eyes fixed on hers. You were right, Diana. This mission is of utmost importance. Paul Maranzano has our city in a strong strangle hold with his drug empire, and we need to cut the head of the serpent. But you won't be alone, we'll have your back every step of the way. Until they won't. Diana took a deep breath, then continued with her concerns. I understand that, but I also have a family mark. Derek and now Jason is also living with us. I need to know they will be safe. Mark nodded, acknowledging the gravity of the situation. The family's safety is a top priority. You have taken precautions to ensure their protection. Now let me explain what you will be doing. He leaned back and outlined a vision for Diana. He will assume the role of the officer in charge at a police station in Paul's territory. The previous officer is on permanent lab due to health problems, so no one will suspect a new appointment. The task is to get evidence, salvage his operations, and bring him down from the inside. It won't be easy, but we believe you are the right person for the job. Diana noted her resolve on everybody. I'll do whatever it takes, Mark. It's time to bring Paul Manzaro. Manzano. I'm just going to call him Manzaro from now on to justice once and for all. The conversation marked the beginning of a dangerous journey into the heart of darkness. Our trust was a rare commodity and the price of failure was unimaginable. As their conversation came to a close in Mark Priest's office, he handed Diana the keys to her new police vehicle. She accepted them with a determined nod, knowing that the car would be a crucial part of her new identity. Diana, this is your new set of wheels. It may not be what you are used to, but it's vital for blending in with your new role. Diana took the keys, her fingers tightly clenching them. She knew that her sleek, high-powered car from her previous life was a distant memory. I understand, Mark. It's not about the car. It's about the mission. I'll make it work. Mark's expression turned serious as he leaned forward, offering her small envelope containing a new credit card. These are for your expenses related to the mission. Use them wisely, but don't hesitate to spend when necessary. We want to make sure you have all the resources you need. I mean, this seems like a James Bond movie at this moment, man. This is really cool. I also like this guy. Normally, bald guys are not exactly the nicest guy in this kind of games, but I guess he is. Diana left Mark Priest's office and made her way to the alley behind the headquarters to repeat her new police vehicle. Looks pretty good, actually. Uh...
Okay, this is actually kind of cool. Yeah, shook up the sentimentality, reminding herself of the mission at hand. She started the engine and drove away, determined to use every skill and resource at her disposal to dismantle the empire of Paul Maranzano and bring him to justice. Even if it meant going back to her roots as a police officer. Okay, so she used to be a police officer. Okay, that kind of makes sense. As Diana parked the police vehicle inside the garage, she noticed that Jason was already there waiting. His reception was a mix of surprise and curiosity as he was trying to step out of the unfamiliar car. Or stressed throughout his mind had something happened. Why is she driving a different car? Miss Diana, what's going on? Why are you driving this car? Did something happen to your old one? Are you okay? That's a lot of question. Yeah, smile reassuringly or uh, appreciating Jason's concern. Everything is fine, I promise. It's just a temporary thing for work. I'm taking on a new assignment and they provided this car. Jason followed his bros, still trying to make sense of it all. A new assignment? Does that mean you are like going back to being a regular officer? Did you get demoted? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I chuckled at Jason's rapid fire questions. No, sweetheart, I haven't been demoted. I'm taking on a special mission. It's important and this car is part of it. I'll explain more later, okay? Jason nodded, a mix of relief and curiosity on his face. Alright, Miss Diana, just be careful, okay? I worry about it. Such a sweet little kid. Diana hugged Jason, reassured by his love and concern. I'll Jason, I promise I'll be careful. With the final embrace, Diana left Jason in the garage and headed inside. Okay, there's the husband. Diana entered his room to find Derek sitting on a couch and Christina Pope. Okay, I guess she's going to talk about the new mission. Derek, you won't believe what happened today. Okay, hold on. Why does it feel like that Derek is a bad guy as well? Yeah, Derek might be a bad guy. Actually, he's too old. That's why maybe I don't like him. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Badge of honor. Okay, she's a police officer right now. Looks pretty cool. The car is cool. Everything looks cool. Oh, hello. That, she is rocking that dress. As Jenny entered a police station in the small community outside the city, she was met with an unexpected silence. There was no one to greet her or offer her a welcome. And the atmosphere was strongly unwelcome. This is not what I expected. Why is there no one here to greet me? They did not receive the memo about my arrival. She couldn't help but wonder if they were unaware of her arrival or if there was a more sinister reason behind the cold reception. It's a tight-knit community out here. Sometimes they don't take kindly to officers like me. Maybe that's why there is no one welcome. But I can't let that turn. Doubts and questions swelled in her mind. Or could it be something more sinister? Could Paul Maranzano have may somehow caught wind of my mission? It would be surprising if he has information everywhere. Despite the uncertainties, Diana knew she had to read it carefully. Okay, I guess she's going to go inside. Okay, so this guy's called Omar. Good morning, ma'am. I apologize for not coming to greet you earlier. We knew you were getting a new boss, but we weren't sure when you were not arrive. Yeah, now for a power smile, if that there was some expression for the initial lack of reception. No problem at all. It's good to meet you both. I'm Diana Thomas, your new officer in charge. Okay, both of them look like douchebag. Come on, continue and explain the situation further. I'm Officer Omar, and this is Officer Peterson. We didn't expect, well, a woman to be on your boss, to be honest. Uh huh. Uh, do you expect a woman? That's certainly a surprise. It's just the three of us here, or are there more officers? There's another officer, Sarah, but she's not in the office today. And as for the rest, well, there's not much crime in this area, so we only have a few officers stationed here. Okay, that makes sense. Diana nodded, understanding the situation a bit better now. So it's a small town in a low crime area that explains the quiet atmosphere. With a sense of clarity about her surroundings, Diana was ready to take charge and navigate her role in this unique assignment. Even if it meant being the unexpected new boss in a place that had grown accustomed to a different status quo. Mm, okay, that kind of makes sense. She pondered her next step, realizing that the officers before her might not be a much help. A nagging suspicion crept into her mind that this situation might be orchestrated by Paul Maranzano to hinder her efforts. Having an incompetent police force will certainly make his illegal activities easier to conduct. These officers don't seem like they will provide much assistance. It's possible that the situation is by design meant to obstruct my mission. Despite the challenges that lay ahead, Diana knew she had to stay focused on the task at hand. With determination in her heart and a keen eye on the peculiar circumstances, she was ready to take on whatever challenges awaited her in this unfamiliar territory. Without wasting any more time, Diana dove into her work, she gathered all the uh, files she thought would be helpful and began going through them methodically, one by one, taking detailed notes. As she delved deeper into the files, her frustration grew. The state of the paperwork was nothing short of a pulling. Cases left incomplete, documents supposedly misplaced, and spilling mistakes littering the reports. Diana could not let this slide. The lack of professionalism and addition to details are unexpected for a police force, and she knew she had to address it immediately. 
She called for Officer Peterson, determined to give him a piece of her mind and set the tone for the stranger she expected. Officer Peterson, look at this file work. It's a complete mess. There are mistakes everywhere, unresolved cases, mixed in with resolved ones, for sending them. Peterson, feeling the weight of her frustration, didn't try to sugarcoat the situation. Oh yeah, I know, it's a real mess. Sorry about that, this place has been better days, you know. Our previous boss had to leave due to mental health issues and things have been slipping since then. They are listened attentively, her expression showing her understanding of the situation. I see. Budget constraints and a change in relationship can suddenly make things difficult. I appreciate your honesty, Officer Peterson, but you can't let this issue affect the quality of work. Need to clean this up, starting with this files. Okay, I am going to ignore this photo again because they are going to talk for a long time, I think. I just want to see that all other characters are. Okay, I think I think we're going to actually end this scene here. Uh, we are going to start off from Diana's disappointment from the next episode. So till then, goodbye, Sarah. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Ta-da!